Um, when last we left our audience, um, we were having a conversation, and I'm sorry, who was the nut job that said that it was Bush the spending? Yeah, okay, Gordon, come on, Gordon. Here's the thing, this is why I disagree with John McCain. That's not Republican Democrats. They're both progressives. They are. They're both spending us, both parties are spending us into oblivion. That, we're, we're having, we're having Marxist and Marxist light, or progressive and progressive light. And that's what people miss about the Tea Party movement. They think that this started with Barack Obama. It did not. They saw this for the past 10 years. And even if you go back within the African American community, sliding left, that's been going on for the last 40 to 50 years. So now you're dealing with a generational occurrence where people now have to re-educate themselves as to what Americanism is truly all about. How many people are reading now more than ever about the founding of our country and are really looking in and doing soul searching on this is who this is who we are? Go ahead. Mr. Beck, I just wanted to review Barack Obama's record for this for his initial year. Okay. <laughs> he ran as a pragmatic moderate and I can understand his charisma you know, and uh, the, uh, the weariness of the Bush years sold people on him yeah. to a certain extent. And I think his race also did play a factor. People wanted to see Martin Luther King's dream realized. Yes. In the past year, we've had a stimulus bill pass, $800 billion, looting of the Treasury. We have had, we have, uh, we're on track for $9 trillion in deficits for the next decade, which completely obliterates anything George W. Bush ever dreamed of. Yeah, but it's not, but again, John McCain would have been for cap and trade. John McCain would have been for universal health care, amnesty. It's the same. It's the same stuff. So it's not. It's it's at a much slower pace, and he would have listened to the conservative grassroots in this part. Yes, but this was my. Hang on just a second. You just said he would have listened to the conservative grassroots. When? When has the Republican Party? You, you're a tea, tea Party member. How many people have gone to a Tea Party? Okay. All right. So you know what? I have to tell you something. Um, the Tea Party movement. You've got Republicans who are saying, you know, you guys are out of control. You're going to destroy the party. Well, you know what? Maybe the parties, both plural, need to be destroyed or at least reset. <laughs> And what's interesting about that, Glenn, is this. You look at my city of Charlotte, North Carolina, you actually have Tea Party goers and organizers that became at-large candidates and ran all the way through to the general election. You're finding the Tea Party movement having more of an influence there. They're no longer able to discount that as much as they tried to in April and March. Remember, this was supposed to be an April phenomenon that has been going on. I'll be speaking on Saturday in Raleigh, North Carolina, yet another party. This is going to be something that goes on until things He's change. Caught on to something. <laughs> He's got a, Gordon, you're a politician. He's got a red tie on blue pants. He's going to be a politician, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you were going to say. Um, yes, I wanted to speak to the, to the mayor there of, uh, I forget, the Monticello. Monticello. You said you don't like being identified as a black mayor, and, and I can understand that. But to say that people did not, and, and that you have a problem with people referring to Barack Obama as the black president, well, that would be fine if whenever any valid criticism of Barack Obama were leveled with against him, people wouldn't automatically, instead of thinking about what's being said, they automatically go on the defensive, and any reasonable criticism of Barack Obama is because he's black well, and, is, and is racist in nature. So to say that um, he's just the president and not just the black president, he is the black president who is being protected and defended to a fault by the black community. We were, we and, were, and we are not listening to were, reason. We were, we were elected. We were, we were, ma'am, we were elected by all people, white, black, myself, and Barack. We don't just represent black people. We represent all people. Well, and we Obama should be respected as that. Ba no, no. Barack Obama wants to redistribute the wealth of this country. Barack Obama said that he wanted a single-payer health plan. Plan. He said that. He also, which, which is a universal health care plan. But if you go to any Joe in my neighborhood, well, in my old neighborhood, if you go to anybody in my old neighborhood and say that Barack Obama wants to take away our personal freedoms with, or, and that the Congress is taking away our personal freedom, our rights to our own bodies, and make our own decisions about our own body with this plan, they say, oh, that's not true. You're just being brainwashed by Glenn Beck. And, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
and, and, and they're just they're just fighting against Obama because he's black. They just don't want to see a black president succeed. When they, any of that. The thing that Glenn Beck said before is that people are not studying about who we are, how this country was founded, and the only way we're going to be able to stop this, and the black community as well, is until we know who we are, where we really came from. See, but that's, but, you know what, and, I, and let me tell you something. The, that's let, the Lisa, point. hang on, I got to take a break, but let me, let, me, let me say this before we take a break. America, I think this is, I think this is where African American conservatives have a leg up on just plain old conservatives. If you're a conservative, you are accused of starving little children to death, making sure that nobody has education, you just hate everybody who's coming across the border illegally because they're different than you, et cetera, et cetera. And so you as a conservative, and I don't think liberals really understand this, as a conservative, we're human beings. And so you say these things and we go home at night and go, gosh, do I, is that what, I mean... No, and you have to do some soul searching. You're a conservative, so you want to starve children, but you're also you're, you, you guys and conservatives, we have soul searched, and the only way America is going to survive is if they ask themselves tough questions and you know who you are and you know what you believe in. But because we're in this political nightmare where nobody nobody speaks the truth, we're not having honest our arguments or conversations about things that are real. Correctness. In fact, this whole African American business is politically correct. I don't believe, Mr. Beck, that when you're talking you on the Glenn phone. Glenn. Okay, Glenn. Right. I don't believe that when you're speaking on the phone with your familiars and you get into a conversation about race, you'll say, or when you're speaking to your wife, you'll go, oh, I'm talking about that black guy over there. You don't see I'm talking about that African American guy. No. You don't, do you? No. It's a politically correct thing. So you why? You refer to me. I mean, but you don't refer to me as oh, a that, German. Oh, uh, that German American. It's just so <laughs> darn silly. But, it but, really is. But America's supposed to be past that. We're supposed to be the melting pot where we're not intimidated to use okay. an adjective just as an adjective and not as a slur or not as a, a delineation. Okay. That's what we have to get to. I'm Back in a second. Oh.